Let's turn now to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 5. We've been looking at the characteristics of those who are disciples of Jesus under the new covenant, of those who will partake of the wealth of God's kingdom. And we see here a third characteristic or virtue mentioned as belonging to those who are the blessed in Jesus' eyes. Blessed are the gentle or the humble and the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We can say that these are laws of the Spirit by which we must live. These characteristics mentioned from verse 3 to verse 11. We also considered that it's a description of the Spirit of Christ as opposed to the Spirit of Satan that rules in the children of Adam. And if self-sufficiency is the opposite of, the, of poverty of spirit mentioned in verse 3, And if a casual, jovial attitude to life is the opposite of that morning serious attitude mentioned in verse 4, then we can say that it's a quarrelsome spirit that is the opposite of this gentleness and meekness mentioned here in verse 5. It is said about Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 18 and 19 that Jesus was beloved by the Father, a servant of the Father whom he had chosen, beloved in whom the Father was well pleased, in whom the Father would put his spirit on him. Because verse 19, he would not quarrel. And that's a very important thing, that we have a testimony that we will never quarrel with any person. What do people quarrel about? Usually about some earthly thing, about material possessions, about something that they want for themselves, their rights, their reputation, their name, their honor. They quarrel about everything concerning earthly things, the honor of men, possessions. People can quarrel because they want something for themselves. And in contrast, Jesus said, blessed are the the gentle. The people who quarrel are trying to inherit the earth. They are trying to possess the earth, people who quarrel over property, for example, they want more of the earth for themselves. And that's why they fight for a little piece of earth, even go to law courts for it. But Jesus said, ultimately, the earth is going to be inherited by those who have given up their rights and those who refuse to fight. The very beautiful example of this in the Old Testament, in the story of Abraham and Lot, We read in Genesis chapter 13 that the herdsmen of Lot and the herdsmen of Abraham were fighting with each other. There was strife between them, Genesis 13 verse 7, because they each had so much of livestock and they could not graze together in the same area. And see the graciousness of Abraham at that point towards his nephew, He says in Genesis 13, 8, let there be no strife. And he tells him, the whole land is before you. We can say the whole earth. This land is before you. Take what you want. You have the first choice. There was no need for Abraham to do that. He was older. He was an uncle. He was the one whom God had called to Canaan by every possible way that you look at it. Abraham had first right to choose. But he gave it up. That's what it means to be gentle and meek, to give up one's right. And Lot 
selfishly chose for himself the best part of the land which happened to be Sodom and Gomorrah. And the interesting thing we see here that God was watching this whole thing from heaven. For it says in verse 14 that when the Lord saw this attitude that Abraham displayed to Lot of giving up his right and choosing the worst part of the land and letting Lot choose the best part. God was so delighted with Abraham just like he was delighted with Jesus as we read in Matthew chapter 12 that he told Abraham in Genesis 13, 14 after Lot had separated from him he says just lift up your eyes now and look towards the north and the south and the east and the west and all the land which you see including the land which Lot has just grabbed selfishly I will give it to you and to your descendants forever. The descendants of Lot were the Moabites and the Ammonites. The descendants of Abraham are the ones whom we know as the Jews. And we can ask today, in 1987, nearly 4,000 years after God spoke to Abraham, as to who is living in that land today. It's not the descendants of Lot. It's the descendants of Abraham who are living in that land, even the land which Lot grabbed selfishly. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And there is an example of that. For us, who are disciples of Jesus Christ, we do not seek an earthly inheritance now. This is a promise for the future. The point is that Jesus never sought anything on this earth. Once when a man came to Jesus and said, Lord, tell my dis brother to divide the property with me. Jesus said no. He refused to be drawn into that dispute between two brothers about some earthly thing. You can never go to Jesus in prayer to help you to fight against somebody else for some earthly thing. Because the Lord will never be interested in that. Jesus told that man in Luke chapter 12 who asked him to resolve that dispute saying who made me a judge over you and he said take heed and beware of covetousness no if we are gentle and meek we give up our rights and God will take care of our rights that was the attitude Jesus took the spirit of Lucifer who became Satan one who was the head of the angels is one of grabbing of possessing for oneself the clenched fist is an appropriate symbol of the human race, the children of Adam. Clenched in the sense of being, having a fighting attitude towards those who will take something which is mine. Clenched in the sense of grabbing tight to what is mine already. Jesus came with an open palm, not with a clenched fist. And the open palm is the opposite of the clenched fist. The race of Adam is symbolized by the clenched fist and those who are under the headship of Jesus Christ have an open palm. They do not fight for their rights. The earth is the Lord's, the Bible says, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and everything in it. And if somebody possesses a part of the earth today, it's only a temporary loan. But one day God will give it as a permanent possession to those who are gentle. There is no gentleness basically within us in our flesh. In our flesh there is a hardness. There is a hardness in our attitude towards others. Jesus told us in Matthew 11:29 to learn gentleness from him. He said, "Take my yoke upon you and learn from me," he said in Matthew 11:29, "for I am gentle." And humble in heart. Jesus never taught us to learn from him how to preach. Or how to heal the sick. But he told us to learn how to be gentle. How to be gentle towards our marriage partner. In the way we speak. How to be gentle in our attitude towards our children. In our conversation. In our attitude. Gentleness instead of hardness. If we have this clenched fist demanding our rights attitude, we will remain hard. We have to learn to give up and to mortify this clenched fist attitude in our flesh. And to learn from Jesus Christ this open palm attitude of giving up our rights. Then we can learn gentleness 
And that will affect every area of our life. We read about Moses in Numbers chapter 12. That he was the meekest man on the face of the earth. What was the distinguishing thing about Moses among many other things? One was this, that he never fought for his own rights. When people questioned his authority as a leader, he always just fell down on his face and let God defend him. He would not defend himself and God defended him mightily. You read that again and again in the book of Exodus and the book of Numbers. Very beautiful to see and an example for all who are spiritual leaders. Uh, one of the most important requirements for a spiritual leader is this, that he does not fight for his position or the authority God has given him. If God has given him an authority, he will take care of that. If God hasn't given it, then it's no use defending it in any case. Blessed are the gentle, God will give them what belongs to them. We cannot get anything by grabbing. Jesus came not with the spirit of grabbing that Lucifer had, but the spirit of giving up. And therefore... Jesus has been made Lord and one day the kingdom of the whole earth will belong to him. We are to follow his example and follow in his footsteps.